YouTubers, it's Big Bapa back with another video for you, a real one, I'm not just talking about the coronavirus. Um, although I feel like I want to make another one on that, but I'll hold back on this. Today is Sunday's gun day. Obviously, it is not morning. It is already afternoon. Um. Just trying to get back in the groove of uh, <laughs> groove of this, but uh, really debated about which gun to show this time. Um, and you probably already know because of the title, but I wanted to let you know anyway that it took me like I really debated. Okay, like um, I only have two two of my own guns left to go over. Um, and I really debated back and forth, back and forth, mainly because, um, one has more, you know, they're both, they're both very, um, you know, they're, they're my, my favorites of all of them. Um, I do like my, you know, obviously I, I like my main handgun and, uh, so... But anyway, you already know, so I guess I don't know why I'm debating, but, or delaying, but it is, um, my grandpa's 30-30. This is a very special, <laughs> very special gun, um, and for, you know, numerous reasons, actually. It's, uh, one, it was my grandpa's gun. Two, um, my grandpa was just a carpenter, so, um, for him to, you know, he, he loved hunting, especially with my uncles, uh, not, my dad never, um, did any real hunting as, at least, as far as I can remember, I think he might have hunted a little bit when he was, you know, before I came around, but, uh. Um, so this is my grandpa's gun. He was a carpenter. Didn't make a lot of money, but liked hunting. And so, obviously, um, you know, he had to, you know, save some money and take money away from others. And they didn't, you know, they didn't live real well. He did do good work as a carpenter. He wasn't just, you know, your framing carpenter or anything like that. Um, he didn't know how to do all that stuff, but his, uh, main income was cabin you know, cabinet type carpentry, so more detail work. Um, did that all of his life to make an income. Besides, um, when he was in the Navy, he was in the Navy for, um, I think, maybe six years. I, they didn't do things quite the same with the same uh, back then. Um, you know, now you think of the typical four years or whatever, but I want to say it might have been three and three or something like that. Um, uh, on his own accord, uh, I don't, uh, you know, it's, I've never heard of him being drafted anyway, so I believe it was all on his own, own wanting, joining the Navy. Uh, he spent, I do know, a great deal of time in the Pacific, uh, was stationed for quite a while at Okinawa or that, whatever basis around the Okinawa, Okinawa. and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that is a very, you know, grandpas are, are always special anyway, but, you know, both of my grandpas were in the Navy during World War II, and so that's pretty special to me, both on the Navy, actually. So, obviously, it's my grandpa's rifle, so that's one reason it is special. The next reason this is special is, um, it's a Winchester 94, obviously 3030, not just any old 3030, um, this is like, you know, pretty much the granddaddy of 3030s, so that makes it really special to me as well, that it's a, a Winchester 94, 
And last but not least, I looked up at the serial number on this baby. And, you know, as you know, I said my grandpa wasn't able to, you know, afford to just, you know, buy buy whatever whenever he wanted. Um so he took care of his stuff, usually, you know, pretty much. You know, all of his carpenter tools, everything like that were was always taken care of. And he loved hunting with my especially with my uncles. And uh so he took care of his guns too. I mean to give you an idea, well, first let me tell you, I looked up the uh, serial number on this. This is a 1942, was made in 1942. If you look up the serial numbers, uh, serial numbers on these guys, um, I forget when they, when they started, but um, there was actually... Um, they, they went up to 19, 1942, and obviously this is related to World War II, but they went up to 1942, and then didn't restart the serial numbers after that, don't fall until 1945. Um, so, to be quite honest, I'm not sure it's possible that he bought this after he came back from the war, but I have a, um... And I can't remember the exact late years, unfortunately, that uh, he was in. But it's possible he either bought it after, or he bought it during, or he bought it before. Before, you know. I'm not, I'm not exa exactly sure. 1942, I mean, obviously, I'm thinking he probably bought it, um, you know, maybe on a, on a leave or afterwards I can't or right or right before possibly that he went in um hard to say but anyway so 1942 it's, it's a 1944 42 1894 Winchester 3030 it's beautiful um so he obviously, for the condition that it's in, and let me know, let me tell you this. So, my grandpa actually, he actually died, uh, passed away when he was, he was only 72. He was, uh, I was actually only 15 at the time. It was 1989, I believe. And my grandpa, my dad doesn't hunt, right? So, this was passed down to me, but I was only 15 at the time, and, uh, but my, he gave it to my dad to hold, or my dad took it to hold on for me, and, um, but, as, again, you know, I didn't keep, want to keep guns in my house for various reasons before, um, so I didn't actually take ownership of this and do anything with it until, Three years, I think two, two and a half, three years ago now. And it was, my dad did, never did anything with it. It was in my, the homemade case that maybe, actually I should have probably showed it during this video, but I'll show it to you at some point. Um, homemade case that my grandpa made. Obviously he was carpenter, so he made a, a wood case for it. Um... But it had not been taken out or done anything with since 1989. So basically, almost 30 years sitting in the, uh, so, in the, a wood case that, you know, I believe might have been under my dad's bed or something, but they're stuck in a closet somewhere. But it's in really good shape. I actually, I've only actually taken it out to the range once. Um... Obviously, the scope on the top. By the way, on 3030s, um, I'll show you in a little bit, actually. But uh, scopes were not that common on a 3030 because of the way it ejects and stuff. But anyway, I wanted to point out that I didn't even touch it. It was still, you know, right dead on at 100 yards. 
when I took it to the range. So, and that's why it's only been once, is because the, the outdoor range that I have, um, you know, 100 yard range that I have access to is, you know, an hour and a half away from me. And so, even more inconvenient than the indoor range is close by. But um, I wanted to take it out there to actually, you know, sight it in if need be. And went out with my son and with his 270 and I brought this along and we brought our ARs along and this was dead on. Hadn't been touched since 1989. It's a 1942, 1894. Winchester 3030. <laughs> I did. I mean, it's just unbelievable to me still. But, uh, so I plan on, on using it. It will be, uh, probably the hunting rifle I use. At least, you know, I may buy more at some point, but this is definitely going to be one I keep, um, try and keep maintained. And we're actually, well, brush it up a little bit. Um, I need to do, I did need to do some more research on exactly what to put on the woodstock. I'm sure if I went to Cabela's, there's probably something right off the shelf that, uh, but I want to do a little research to find what's best for especially old woodstock like this. And, uh, as well as what to polish the, uh, the barrel and the, um, the, the rest of the, the metal here with to uh, to not damage it and but take out you know some of the blemishes that's that are in it um yeah just have to repeat 1942 1894 Winchester 3030. lever action of course um so if you're not familiar with this this gun or the lever action and just say i mean i should have shown you this from the beginning but it is empty um so you do notice it opens from the top hence the slightly side mounted scope and I, this is actually, if you um, take a closer look, you're probably not going to be able to see, but um, let's see if I can get it up in there. Sorry, well, I probably should be using the top thing, but anyway, there is this right, this see if I can see that adjustment knob there it is um, oh no you can't that's not the adjustment knob right here I don't know, you probably won't be able to see maybe a little bit but my grandpa actually had to file that out in order to put this scope on here And obviously he's not around. I've done some reading um, that there was a at some point they made changes to the thirty thirty. But I'm if I remember right, it was after this a nineteen forty two model to allow for the you know a side mounted scope. I'm pretty sure. My grandpa figured out how to make this work prior to them doing that. So that's pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, it is a barrel magazine, so I believe it holds six or seven. I can't remember. But, you know, you slide your 30-30 uh, shells in there. Obviously, this was another thing that supposedly I'm not familiar with that, you know, 
with lever guns, but supposedly the way they did this down here was also quite a bit different um, than had been done previously. I don't know, but I, I remember reading that when I was researching it. And then, you know, it would take a, a shelf from the bottom, a magazine barrel, slide it up into the top, as well as cock the hammer back all at the same time, and then you would just uh, fire. Um, it does have, it's a grip, grip safety. Um, if you notice, see this little button right here? Oh no, the button's up here, my bad button right there that is a grip safety if you're not holding this grip solid you can't pull the trigger um what else can i just tell you this is the, the scope that's on here is a williams either a Williams or a William 5 scope it says um, and I don't see any actual numbering to see what uh, funny enough that actually says the scope was actually made in Japan so it really makes me wonder Considering my grandpa was, you know, stationed uh, for quite a while in Okinawa, I wonder if he, he maybe he bought this from somebody overseas. I don't know. There's maybe at least the scope part, or maybe not. I don't know. Who knows? So I was going to clean this up a little bit. Um, on this video, but I think I opted not to because I do really want to uh, research what to use on because I want to do it all right and I'd rather do it at one time. There's no sense in you know wasting your time and my time just you know sticking something down the barrel and doing a little brushing here and there when I'm just gonna redo it again, but um. Yeah, I want to. I want to. If you guys got have any suggestions on uh, what you use on wood stocks, especially an older wood stock, if, uh, preferably, and then on you know the uh, the metal and the you know and the barrel to not you know damage any of the you know much of the bluing, but get out some of the imperfections still. Um, and again, it's in great shape, so there's not really a lot of imperfect, there's no, there is no rust, you know, divots or anything. It feels smooth as I run it, my hand out, down the barrel here, or even on this. It's all in great shape. It just needs to be cleaned up, I think, a little bit. Um, he kept good care of it, but, um, you know, there's a hunting gun. I'd, but I'd like to clean it up, like, to look really nice even more nice than what he did um yeah so if you have any ideas on that or what you use let me know um at some point we'll get up to the range with this guy we'll get up to the indoor ranges for hopefully with the pistols hopefully fortunately gotta worry about those corona zombies out there right now still so It'll probably be a little bit, but that's it. What do you think? Do you have anything nice, or, you know, something, you know, if you have an older gun, let me, let me know anything, you know, what is your oldest gun if you have, if you have uh, old collector guns? This, I still don't, again, I don't consider this a collector. This is, I inherited this. It is still well, um, 
you know, perfectly capable of taking out hunting. And I'm surely, if I go out hunting at some point, I, you can believe me, I'll take this. Because, like I said, <laughs> dead on after sitting 30 years in a case, um, you yeah, know, I, I have no doubt I could take down a, you know, a deer or whatever I was hunting for. That's it. I can't think of anything else. I think I've drawn this out enough. Um, uh, I don't know if there's anything special about the, the strap. I don't think so, but, uh, I mean, if you happen to know anything about the strap, you can let me know that too. I have a feeling. I don't know whether the strap came, I guess the strap probably might have came with the original gun, or maybe it was an add-on, I don't know. But, uh, anyway. That is Sunday for gun day. Sorry I didn't actually clean the gun for you today, but uh, like I said, we'll do another video with this gun once I do a little more research. I thought about it kind of last minute and, you know, with everything going on, wasn't going to run to the store <laughs> right now to, to grab any uh, product, but uh, I want to do this, uh, show this gun again and, you know get the products for uh, treating the, the wood stock and the metal so that hopefully with any luck maybe I can pass this down to my grand, grandson right that's the goal alright Sunday is gun day Big Bapa out